Playing the guitar is a skill, uh, for lack of a better way to word this, that an untalented person could acquire, or is there some talent that is naturally bestowed upon individuals when they're born that give them a, a better edge, or can just someone who, with a great deal of determination <laughs> and, and appreciation of music, I mean, obviously, you know, you'd, you'd want them to be able to hear and, right. and such as that, but uh, do you, how important do you think, yeah, or is, do you think there's an element that says, well, well, this guy plays so great because he's just talented, or this guy plays just as well, but he has a talent, he's got a lot of acquired skill. I think some people, you know, I had friends of mine in England that were just naturally gifted. It just flowed out of them. It was, sick, it was kind of sickening to me. Yeah, it's they, disgusting. It is, it is, it is awful. <laughs> But you know what I found with those people when it came easy to them, they didn't work hard and they let it go, and consequently, he's not a professional musician. You know? So there's that side of it, and then I think there are people that are gifted with their hands, you know, that are born to work with their hands, yeah. whether that's carpentry or you know whatever. And I know that's me, you know, with my design stuff that I've done. I'm a painter and, and the guitar thing, but I don't think I'm naturally gifted as a guitar player. Yeah. I've worked incredibly hard, and if you knew the hours that I've spent in a room, just really working at it. I mean, when I was at GIT, probably 14 hours a day, I'd wake up, I'd run, swim, I kept myself fit, my mind healthy, I would do all my notation stuff, I learned fretboard, I formulated exercises for myself to learn. I was behind everyone else, so I went there not being very good compared to the other people, knew I had a lot of work to do. But once I got out, I knew where I wanted to go with it. And I don't reference any of that material anymore because there's too much in here to work on. Well, you're Does that make sense? Yeah. There's, there's so much in here that I still need to develop. Mm -hmm. That going somewhere else for it, you know, I would never pull out a true fire course because I'm working on stuff here. And I think when you develop your own thing, that's what you do. You find what works for you, and then you go, okay, now I need to internalize it and then bring it out. That's what I do. Kind of, kind of making it your own and developing it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I never sat down and said, you know, or had someone say, well, chord tone improvisation. We were taught arpeggios, but no one ever said to me why. Mm -hmm. yeah. or, or it wasn't apparent to me. Yeah, when I took a uh, high school band, I played trumpet, and we practiced all these scales. <laughs> <laughs> and I never said, you know, well, if you know the scale, you, you can, can play, improvise over this chord progression with that scale. Yeah. I never figured that out until I started playing guitar on my own, and I figured out, I, I think the first book I got was the Holy Guitar Bible. Yeah. And the guy actually broke down you know, here's a progression, play the scale. And I was like, if I had known that in high school, I would have been way Yeah. I, but, uh, but that was my, that was my, when I came to True Fire and the Sweet Notes thing was, I'd realized I had all these guys come to me for lessons. And they would go, you know, well, someone told me this scale works over this these chords. Why does it suck? And I said, well, keep landing on the fourth, it's not in the chord. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So you have to go to the chord tones, regardless if the scale in a blanket tone fits. No one tells you, no, the key tones are, and then when the chord changes, well, so do the chord tones. Right. So you have to develop more than just learning a scale. You, you do have to have an ear. That, and but also you can then really kind of hone in on it, like, you know, back to the blues thing, that for me, knowing a, a minor pentatonic works, you have to make it work, right? Because if you just flat land on the minor third, it sucks against the major third. So you have to you have to imply the bend, right? So you have to do all those things. But then what are the cool tones? Well, most people would just resolve here, wouldn't they? Right, yeah. No, I, yeah. yeah. Someone who does it all the time. <laughs> right, because it's the root note. Right? Yeah. But what about going to the flat seven? <laughs> but, the, the, you know, but it's a simple thing that when I did seminars with people, I'd have a guy go, well, um, 
why are you saying go to the major third? And I go, well, how does it sound? Well, I like it. But he could not go there. His muscle memory was locked into the, the pentatonic. The pentatonic. Yeah. And I said, just go there once, just slide into it or do something. And I said, when you go to the next band rehearsal and you've hit that note, your bandmates are going to say, what have you done different? That's what? cool. You've learned something, you've gone outside of it. So that's what I say to people, is maybe if you just add one different thing to something you already know. Actually, I've got a concept I'll throw out to you.